From Otter Creek Golf Course in Columbus, Indiana, the 1969 American Pro Youth Classic, presented by the National Association of Insurance Agents, in cooperation with the following 15 leading fire and casualty insurance companies. Aetna Insurance Company, Aetna Life and Casualty, Chubb and Son Incorporated, Crum and Forster Insurance Companies, Employers Commercial Union Companies, Firemen's Fund American Insurance Companies, Great American Insurance Companies, The Home Insurance Company, Insurance by the Hartford, Insurance Company of North America, The Maryland American General Group, Reliance Insurance Companies, Royal Globe Insurance Companies, The St. Paul Insurance Companies, and the United States Fidelity and Guarantee Companies. And now, here's the president of the National Association of Insurance Agents, Mr. Charles Christman of Pikeville, Kentucky. Welcome to the 1969 American Pro Youth Classic, sponsored by the National Association of Insurance Agents and 15 of the country's leading stock insurance companies. We're here at beautiful Otter Creek Country Club in Columbus, Indiana, where 60 of the country's outstanding junior golfers under the age of 18 are playing with 20 of the leading professionals from the PGA Tour. The 35,000 member agencies of the National Association we're delighted in attracting over 8,000 junior golfers across the country to this program in its first national championship. These young men are experiencing the thrill of their lives by engaging in actual tournament play with their idols. They are truly a credit to the sport and to the communities from which they came. Come along with us and enjoy some of the tournament play. Action will start in a moment in this tourney that features a $50,000 purse for the pros. Byron Taggart of Tampa, Florida, National Tournament Director, is introducing some of the dignitaries present for the first day of play, such as Mayor E.H. Klein of Columbus, who's delighted to have a national tournament in his city, and the Honorable Edgar D. Whitcomb, Governor of the State of Indiana. On behalf of the people of the State of Indiana, I want to say welcome. I want to congratulate the Independent Insurance Agents Association for this great program that it has put on nationwide. And I want to congratulate these young men. I hate to have my audience behind me. I want to congratulate all of you for your success. I want to wish you the best of success today. As the governor finishes his remarks, the boys' attention is then focused on tourney director Roger Gainham as he welcomes the 20 professional golfers. They're playing for a first prize check of $10,000 and more if their team does well. In the best ball team competition, a team's composed of one pro, three amateurs, the winning pro can make another 5000 And the first four-man team will be teeing off shortly. The 60 junior golfers in this event have been battling through local and state qualifying plus two rounds here at Otter Creek that paired the field to those that have the privilege of playing with the pros. Trophies will be the prizes sought by these young men, but the memories for each will be the most coveted reward. There are plenty of top PGA names present. The PGA champ, Julius Boros, will be after the 10,000 first prize. Julie's played in this tournament twice before, and he won it two years ago. Teeing off on a perfect golfing day, Miller Barber. Barber had the U.S. Open title in his back pocket this summer till it slipped away on the final 18 holes. Former U.S. Open champ Ken Venturi's here. Ken's beginning a comeback bid after having some problems with his hands. In fact, every top professional in the nation is here, if only in spirit. This journey's called a proxy pro because each has signed a proxy naming one of these amateurs to play for him. On the tee, Arnold Palmer. Well, actually, it's Mike Kelly of Palmdale, Ooh. California, who tied for fifth Ooh. in qualifying for this event. Top qualifier, shooting a two over par 146 for 36 holes over this tough layout, Morris Atalski of San Diego, California. He's playing for Dave Stockton with Lionel A. Bear. Tied for third in qualifying, John Brackett of Athens, Georgia. Brackett's 150 shows he plays like his namesake, former PGA Open and Masters champ Gary Player. 
But on hand in person are such stars as Tom Weisskopf. In 1968, Tom banked over $150,000, third on the money-winning list. And although there's more money in this two-day tourney than most 36 Hall events, he's helping a youngster improve his putting instead of working on his own. Bob Golby, last year's Masters champ, will be looking for that 10 grand first prize. As will Gay Brewer, who won the Masters crown the year before. Brewer, professional director of this tourney, sponsored by the National Association of Insurance Agents, will be playing with Eddie Pierce of Tampa, Florida, the defending amateur champ. And Eddie's blonde hair matches that of his proxy, Jack Nicklaus. Incidentally, so does his golf game. Another top qualifier is Craig Stadler of La Jolla, California. His proxy is Lou Graham. And last year's U.S. Open champ, Lee Trevino, has sent his proxy to Frank Zaylor of New Albany, Indiana, runner-up in qualifying at 147. As the scores indicate, Otter Creek is not an easy 18. It was designed by world-famous golf course architect Robert Trent Jones. It's over 7,100 yards long, has 72 white sand traps, six water hazards. It's difficult, but fair. A true championship course to challenge these amateur and professional champions. The tourney challengers are beginning to come to the forefront now. Former PGA champ Jay Hebert is on the 470-yard par-4 10th hole. Hebert is one under for the day. Richard Crawford is reported two under through 14. Johnny Pott is two under after 12. Dan Sykes after seven. On 15, young Doug Todd of Hagerstown, Indiana, shares the amateur lead. He's two under after picking up birdies on 13 and 14. Todd, playing with Jack McGowan, has helped that team into the lead in that division at uh, seven under par, 72. Chris Knight, playing with McGowan, also is two under after birdies on three of the last four holes. The Salina, Kansas golfer and Todd well out front of all the other amateurs. On 18, Richard Crawford's team about to finish. They're six under. Paul Hahn of Paso Roble, California, has a birdie putt. And he puts his team into a tie for the lead at eight under. Finishes one over for the lead in the clubhouse, and Crawford is two under for the pro lead at the moment among those finished. These amateur and pros are working hard together for that team title. Miller Barber's group is out on 11, and Tommy Beershank of Spartanburg, South Carolina, has a shot at a birdie. Miller's team of Beershank, Wiley Ramsey of Marion, North Carolina, and Brian Davis of Reno, Nevada, have moved to three under par. Uh, Barber himself has won over. With golf as the common denominator, these young men have found a rare camaraderie with their playing partner. The National Association of Insurance Agents happy and pleased to have the opportunity to give these young men this experience. Here's Beershank's putt. Getting ready. Just slides by. Quickly to 15, where Tom Weisskopf has a birdie putt to go one under. Dan Sykes, now the tourney leader at three under par. Richard Crawford, Jay Hebert, Johnny Pott, all now finished at two under 70. And Weisskopf may be beginning his bid as uh, he's now uh, one under with three holes to play. Jack McGowan, putting on 18, hasn't had a birdie all day long. And he still doesn't. But his team has gone eight under par for the lead in that category on the shooting of Todd and Knight. Both boys have finished with spectacular two under par 70s. McGowan finishes six over par, doesn't get a stroke for his foursome. Uh, maybe Todd Knight will be available to give lessons tonight. On 16, Dan Sykes' team challenging. Jeff Thompson of Twin Falls, Idaho. Long birdie putt coming up. How about that one? Around and down, and Sykes' team is now seven under. Dan himself has the pro lead at three under par. Miller Barber finishing up on 18. Tom Weisskopf has finished. He's at three under 69. And Barber had a chance to time there, didn't get the job done. So Miller will be tied with Richard Crawford, Jay Hebert, and Johnny Pott at two under par 70. And Mason Rudolph, Bobby Nichols have finished at 71. Dan Sykes playing up 18 now. 550-yard par 5 hole. Good birdie hole. Dan's three under par. And a birdie here would uh, give him the lead. 
Dan's second shot has landed on the front of the green, and he's left himself a real long eagle putt to probably about 50 feet, it appears. If he makes it, he can break the course record, though, set by pro Sam Carmichael three years ago at uh, 68. Fine putt by Dan, but a little bit short. So Dan Sykes finishes the first day at 68. Second at 69 is Weisskopf with Crawford, Bear, Barber, and Pot. Another shot down. Sykes tied for the team lead on this last hole with McGowan and Weisskopf at eight under. Another perfect day here on the first tee for the second day's activities. Two golfers uh, just starting today that were expected to be among challengers yesterday. Have got some catching up to do. That's Eddie Pierce here, who shot a three over par 75, is five strokes behind the leaders, uh, Todd and Knight in the amateur division. Gay Brewer is uh, among several golfers at one over par 73, five strokes behind Sykes. We've noticed that uh, the youngsters appear to feel a little more relaxed today with the pros than they did yesterday, and uh, maybe the other way around also after uh, 18 holes. Par is probably going to take a little more of a beating today. Dick Crawford teeing off on three. Dick's lost a stroke to par. Uh, that was on number two. But he may get that and back in a hurry. He just put a beauty here on the par three third hole. Fine shot for Dick. So he can go back two under par for the tournament, even par for the day if he can uh, sink this putt. Looks like about a 10-footer. He's going to take his time, make sure he can get it in there. So we mentioned this is a par three-hole, 200-yarder water trap right in front of the green. And Richard drops it in there, no problem whatsoever, and he's back two under par for the tournament. Amateur leaders Knight and Todd are over on four. Todd's even par for the day. Got a long putt here, however, for a birdie. Knight, incidentally, is one over with a bogey yesterday, or bogey on the last hole, rather. Short, short by Doug Todd. But Chris Knight gets his, rolls it in, and he's back uh, two under par for the tournament. Pearson Brewer now playing the first green, and uh, Gay has a long putt here for a birdie. Eddie Pierce helping him line it up. It looks like maybe a 45-footer or so. Hey, hey! Gay Brewer drops that one in. And so he's off and running here on the second day, and uh, I think we can count on him before the day's over. About to hit his second shot on the par-4 sixth hole, Miller Barber. Barber's birdie two and uh, is three under for the tournament. Good shot by Miller Barber. Left himself about a six-foot birdie putt. He could tie for the lead by going four under then. Tied with Dan Sykes, who's just about to tee off and was four under, of course, after yesterday's play. Miller taking his time here to be sure and get this birdie putt on the par four sixth hole. And he drops it in to tie Sykes for the individual professional lead. Well, Doug Todd and Chris Knight are having their problems. The two amateurs have now gone uh, three over par on the front side, and they stand that way here on the 13th tee. And it appears that Doug's not real happy with that shot either. They both are one over par for the two-day tourney. However, Paul Hahn, who started the day one over, has slipped to three over with a double bogey on seven. The National Association of Insurance Agents bringing you this fine tournament from Otter Creek Golf Course in Columbus, Indiana. Todd and Knight, three over for the day. Defending amateur champ Eddie Pierce appears to be playing better today. His putter working well. However, he's just even. Needs this four-footer to uh, stay that way. And he does just that. On 15, Miller Barber still shares the lead. He's now five under par. That's three under four today. And uh, he can gain another stroke here. But 
Flips on by. That leaves him five under. He's tied with Richard Crawford, who's coming up 14, and Dan Sykes, who has birdie number four. Tom Weisskopf is on eight. He started the day three under par. He went to four under. But this par putt here on the par three eighth hole has slipped by. Tom a little bit unhappy. He's going to be back even par for the day. Taking his time so uh, he doesn't blow the shortly. McGowan's group completing their round. 13 under par. Doug Todd putting for a par himself. Oh, too bad. Doug finishes then with a 76 with this tap in. That'll be two over for the tourney at 146. And Chris Knight, who bogeyed 17, can now tie him for the lead in the clubhouse. Here's Knight. Yes, sir, a tremendous pressure putt, a big thrill for Chris Knight, a thrill also for the National Association of Insurance Agents, who are delighted to be sponsoring this event. Knight and Todd tied for the lead at 146, but we understand Eddie Pierce is now just two over for the tourney through 13, making a bid. Dan Sykes uh, also making a bid. Here on 11, this 10-foot putt could put him six under par. Well, it wasn't in the middle, but they all count, and Dan Sykes has gone six under par. Richard Crawford, you're on 18. He also can go six under if he can make this putt. It's a long one. Slips on by the left side of the hole. Miller Barber, incidentally, has already finished up. He's five under for the tourney at 139. And we understand that Ken Venturi's making a bid for the lead in the tourney. He's teeing off on 18 right now and is five under for uh, the tourney also. Although Crawford uh, missed the individual lead, his team has gone 15 under and uh, he definitely uh, has the lead there. Out on 14, Tom Weisskopf bidding for an eagle here with a chip just off the green. And he's left himself about eight feet short. He's not very happy with himself and... Uh, if he misses this birdie putt, and it's a long one, uh, he, well, he's just about got himself out of the running. But the putter works this time for Tom, and uh, he's now four under, two shots behind Dan Sykes. Ken Venturi putting for a par on 18, and the course record a 66. And Venturi finishes five under for the tournament with Crawford and Barber. Really sneaked in with a great day. Most of the gallery unaware of his fine play until just now. Eddie Pierce has taken the amateur lead. Eddie on 17 now is two under for the day. One over for the tournament. One stroke better than Todd and Knight. Eddie needs only to par out to win his third proxy pro golf title. But that could be a problem if this one isn't close to the pin. Oh, a very fine putt for Eddie Pierce. He's left himself about a foot for a par here. If he gets this one, he's got the championship all but wrapped up. Right in the middle. So coming up is the par 5 18th for Eddie. And it's produced quite a few birdies in the tournament for the long hitters. And Eddie is a long hitter on the 18th tee. A beauty right down the middle, about 275 yards for Eddie Pierce. Challenging for the team trophy is Bobby Nichols' foursome. The team is tied for the lead at 15 under par because of the play of this young man, John Bacon of McMinnville, Oregon. Bacon has contributed four birdies today and is shooting even par golf after going 10 over yesterday. Bacon trying for another birdie here on 17. Just missing. So Nichols' team remains tied for the lead at 15 under par going to 18 with uh, Dick Crawford. We understand Eddie Pierce is about to hit his third shot on 18, an important one from the trap. Here's Eddie about to hit. 
and he feeds himself an eight-footer. He's got the title one with two putts to get down. A great day for Eddie Pierce. Tom Weisskopf to go five under with a four-foot birdie putt on 15. He trails Sykes by just one stroke with three holes to play. Drops it, second birdie in as many holes. It appears Tom is charging at the end just as yesterday. On 18, Bobby Nichols can win the team title with this birdie putt by Jeff German. Oh. Look at Tom, Idaho, it's no good. Nichols' team ties Dick Crawford for the lead at 129, 15 under par. Dan Sykes, the pro leader, now seven under par. How about that one? Dan Sykes has gone eight under par. He also birdied 14 just moments ago. It appears that he's safely in front of Tom Weisskopf by three strokes, but uh, golf being the game it is, you're never sure. But you won't see many putts made any longer than that one that Dan just dropped here on the 16th hole. It appears that things are all over here for Tom Weisskopf. He's left himself a long putt for a birdie on 18. He's left himself short, and uh, he's got about a six-footer now for a tie for second with Venturi, Crawford, and Barber at 139. Oh. And so it appears Dan Sykes has it won. That putt cost uh, Weisskopf's team, incidentally, a possible chance at uh, first also. Dan Sykes coming up 18, but turning in his hip pocket if he doesn't blow it. Just uh, two days ago at Westchester, he did just that uh, when he missed out on a first place $50,000 check. He's eight under par, but uh, I'm sure Dan is not going to play it cozy because uh, his team still has a chance to tie for the lead at 15 under, and uh, he'll be trying to help them along and uh, win that team title. It looks like his second shot has landed just to the right of the green on the top of a bunker on this par five hole. So unless he muffs this shot, shades of Arnold Palmer in the Masters a few uh, years back, well, then this tourney is going to be his. He's all set. Chips it up there. Oh, beauty. Just three feet from the pin for a birdie putt that would give his team a tie for the team lead also. Dan taking his time. There's no doubt that he's won the individual pro title. Wants to keep his team in it. And Sykes makes the bird, finishing the day with a five under 67. The tourney at 135, four strokes on top of everyone. Sykes will pick up a check of $10,000. The four in second, $2,887 each. And Dan will still add to his total, maybe as much as 5,000 as the playoffs begin for first in team competition. Richard Crawford putting on one. He gets the 45-foot birdie putt in the sudden death playoff. That puts the pressure on the other two teams of Nichols and Sykes here on the first sudden death playoff hole. Again, John Bacon will try and save the day for Nichols. The unbelievable young man has done it again, his fifth birdie of the day, and now the pressure shifts to Sykes. Jeff Thompson trying for a bird here. Slides by 8, 10 feet. Just one more chance for Dan Sykes' team. And the burden falls on the shoulders of Jim Farrell of Savannah, Georgia. And the Sykes team is out. Nichols and Crawford play on. They par two. Crawford pars three. Again, John Bacon with the pressure putt. He does it again. A fantastic performance for this young man. And Bobby Nichols picks up a check for $5,000 on that putt. Eddie Pierce will receive the Amateur Championship trophy in a moment. Eddie, we're very pleased uh, with this championship in coming along and taking first place in the first national proxy pro championship. It's really great. 
You took the very first one in Tampa uh, that was staged. You took the fourth one in St. Petersburg, and now the fifth one. How do you feel? I feel real good, Mr. Taggart. I'm just sorry it's my last year, and because it's going to be such a big thing in the years to come. I remember when I played in it the first year, and it's just grown so enormously. It's unbelievable. And uh, I think it's a great honor to play with Gay and uh, all the other pros because you never know how it feels until you're out there on the course and they're helping you, you know, and they're trying just as hard as you are. And they want you to do good and you want them to do good and it's just an unbelievable feeling. And uh, I just want to wish this tournament all the luck in the world because I know it's going to be a big success in the future. This has been the 1969 American Pro Youth Classic. Proxy Pro Golf Tourney from Otter Creek Golf Course in Columbus, Indiana. Sponsored by the National Association of Insurance Agents and 15 of the leading stock insurance companies in the nation. This has been a sports film production.